A very good morning and welcome to Newsline. We're coming to you live and direct from the News First studios here in Colombo. Your usual host, Farah Shakatali, is overseas. I'm Charlotte Benedict and I will be sitting in for him today. Starting off, let's uh, welcome our guest, Mr. Dio Gunasekara, former chairman of Coop. A very good morning and welcome to morning, Newsline. Morning, uh, Mr. Dugan Sekera, corruption, economic crisis. Corruption is, of course, has been rampant in the country in the recent past. The economic crisis in the country is, is a massive issue that the people in the country are beginning to face now. What is the outlook like of the country? What is? What is there? What is the outlook of the country looking like? This economic crisis that's brewing in the country. People are feeling. People but, are starting to feel it. But the MPs are not aware of such a crisis. <laughs> MPs, are, uh, recently, uh, government ministers came out and said that uh, the people should tighten their belt. <laughs> they should uh, reduce their foreign spending. Uh, is it fair on, on part of the government to come and ask the general public to tighten their belt when the government themselves seem to be spending... No, Charlotte, leverage? I think they are completely messed up by the, 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 uh, the incumbent government. So when they came into power, they were quite aware there was the financial situation was critical. Particularly the foreign exchange reserves were depleted. And if you read the, the statement made by Prime Minister and then Foreign for, for Finance Minister, Ravi Karunanayaka, on the floor of the house, and they were telling that we are in a mess and we are to salvage the whole economy. Now, three and a half years gone, and we are in the un unprecedented crisis since independence. Because we have 8 billion reserve fund, which con consists of only borrowings, not earnings, simply. Never in our history, such a situation. Because our exports have not gone up. We purely, for purpose of foreign exchange, we depend on foreign remittance. The poor women who are sending us money, mm. that is the main source From of Middle revenue. East. revenue. So last three years, they have, we had, they have diversified uh, their exports to other countries, finding new markets completely. The main fundamental, the original sin here is, I can be traced back to the 1978, where they abolished all the taxes and sources of revenue and brought down income tax rates to the minimum, thereby from 1978, the government revenue was was 24% of the GDP hmm. in 1978. Today it is 11%. I mean, this is the thing, this is the fact which has been completely ignored by all administrations in the last 40 years. And now it's I, know, I, I have been telling you, although, although I was a minister, from my, you can see from my budget speeches, in spite of the fact that I was a minister, I was very critical even pleading the government to raise the government revenue will ultimately face such a crisis. Now we are facing such a crisis because we have government revenue only not even sufficient to pay the salaries, pensions and other day-to-day -day needs. But is this the then tip how, of how the, to find money? Is this the tip of the iceberg? Is this uh, the worst that this country can get? Is it going to get even worse? Yes. Yeah, so they, 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 apparently I don't see they are not taking any even pre Precautionary measures for a The situation. Ministry of Finance issued a communique saying that they are going to stop vehicle imports for ministers. They are going to stop issuing out uh, permits to ministers for a year. That is, is a drop. Step Even in the if right it direction? Is, my information that is well, the horse, well, the, they are, he, he is closing the stable after the horses are bolted. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that is only a my, I don't, it won't help at all. Because our export, our imports are double the exports. Hmm. Double, almost, or more than double. So, we, so there's a balance, trade balance, imbalance, the balance of payment deficit. That is the main problem. That is why, how is affecting the foreign exchange? The rupee is going down because of that. But then speaking of So the we have a government revenue problem internally, then externally the exchange problem, then no production in the country. So that, that is the situation. Speaking of the depreciation of the rupee, certain government ministers who call themselves the economic expert came out and said, why are the exporters complaining about the depreciation of the rupee? The depreciation of the rupee is good for the exporters. Their dollars have more value here in Sri Lanka. Is there truth to this statement? 
of course, is good for the exporters, but uh, no one knows the fact that only about 25 percent, 25 percent of the exports have been retained abroad. All previous governments have failed to get that 25 percent. That is one of the factors. I think we will have to bring it out. They are keeping out because they, they know that when the, the situation is volatile and the rupee is depreciating, they think they are better to keep it out. Hmm. So, uh, Mr. Dugura Sekhar, I see in Parliament, uh, in different forums, we speak a lot about the problem. We speak very less about how we can address the problem. Now, we have identified the problem is the depreciation of the rupee, the economic crisis. But how can the government address it? What are your suggestions? You know, uh, there are a number of factors, not one. One, I said uh, revenue, government revenue. You have to increase the government revenue base today because they have been, they have, Jayajajan abolished all the direct taxes and brought the income tax to the minimum. That is a direct effect was that and in place he substituted the direct tax with the indirect tax. That today the indirect tax is 85 percent of all the taxes. Hmm. So the consumers had to bear the buy burden. Consumer. The general public of the country. Not the, the rich people, people. Not the rich people. Not the rich people. And but it was a promise of this and government. And there's massive tax evasion. You know. The India tax evasion is an intensive tax evasion. The people who, who are rich and who are paying, but paying less, and there are other people who are not paying at all. So finally, the consumers have to, have to feed the government. And that is one, one. Then the export problem, another one. Then we have no savings. Now our savings is the lowest in the whole world. You know, 20, 22 percent savings. Our, you know, we need about 40 percent investment, but we have only 22 percent savings. So the rest, there is no government revenue, and we'll have to continue to uh, depend on the uh, borrowings, local as well as foreign. So, uh, Mr. Dugu Sekar, you were speaking about uh, you were speaking about borrowings and all that. Was it a mistake on the part of the previous government uh, when they took massive loans from China and India and the, uh, from the World Bank to build ports like the Hambantota port, the Maktala Airport, which which have not shown any potential of of being uh, an investment for the country? My response is that there's nothing theoretical. There's nothing wrong in updating of borrowings. All, all governments borrow, but there are limitations. But in regard to you know, infrastructure development, since independent, we had had no infrastructure development until Mahindra Rajapak started. That, that, that is a, this is a, it's a fact. The, why we went wrong was that once they invest on the infrastructure development, because you must understand there is a long term investment. Then, how to repay the money, repay the interest. At least we must be in a position to repay the interest. But and wasn't for, these... For that, on parallel, we must have industrial development. And but that we failed. Wasn't these thought about when no, the loans that is, were a, being taken? lack of planning. And why wasn't, why wasn't such a loud voice being raised at the time? No, Charling, the main thing is that with, after the abolition of the Minister of Planning by J.R. Jajana, there had not been central planning or any planning as far as the economy is concerned under any administration. And each minister has his own way. Now, they are, you can't have, because ours is a developing, our a small country, a small economy. Small economy. You know, our economy is only just $85 billion. Hmm. Out of uh, world economy of $85,000 billion. So, it's 85 upon 85,000. You can understand. It's a drop, on, <laughs> drop in the ocean. So, we are vulnerable. Because uh, the, with the changes, I mean, changes in the world, uh, world economy also is volatile. So therefore, we have to be extremely careful, take precautionary measures, safeguard the economy. That is part of the central bank, no doubt. Then whatever our new government came, they put a rogue gas in the central bank governor. Uh, and and the, the finance minister and I hold the prime minister as an economic affairs minister. Ravi Karunayaka, the first foreign five finance minister, and then Arjuna Mahindra, Central Bank Governor. These are the three culprits. I mean, were directly responsible for escalating the crisis. The crisis was there hmm. for having escalated the crisis. And, and one has bolted and in Singapore, the other is out of the, out of the cabinet, <laughs> running list batting. <laughs>
But how, how much longer do you think that this government can go on like this? They've clearly lost uh, uh, the trust of the general public. How no, long no. do you think that they can continue? No, whoever comes to power, they must have, I mean, and they must have a whole brand new program, new program, taking the realities into account. The main thing is, the first thing you must understand that the world is changing fast. There's a new world order. There's a new trade order. And there's an economic change in the economic balance, world economic balance. And I'm, 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 today, from 2010, the, uh, China is the second economic power. And that's a fact. It's a reality. And you can't ignore the Whether you like it or not, it's a reality. Then we'll have to, our Asian economy is ahead of all other economies. So then when you think of international trade, you must see, try to sell our goods to the market, emerging economies. Mm. But we are still 70%, 80% dependent on the West, America, European Union. They are in a crisis. So that is why I say there's no central planning. You can't blame the central bank alone. Central bank within the, their premises, they, they may act. But same government must have a proper planning and vision. The foreign minister should advise as to see the what is happening around the world. Then the finance minister must give the advice. Here there is no such coordinated work management. And on top of so all economic that, management has completely collapsed. And on top of all that, we've got the rampant corruption, the best example yeah, being the central bank. That is, a, that is a general is a world phenomenon and also our <laughs> Sri Lankan phenomenon today. But in, but, in, but in Sri Lanka, you can see that uh, these ministers, these uh, parliamentarians, politicians, whoever you'd like to call them, they don't seem to be intimidated by the fact that, okay, the central bank bond scam was caught. They don't seem to stop from there. I mean, they keep on coming up no, with these scandals. They didn't have the debate, no. They fixed two days till that debate has not taken place. Due to the lack of a translated report. It, now, that translation has come. Still, they have not had that. Translation is there now. Why is that such a, there's the biggest scandal in the public service. And now how many years, three years have gone. And this took place on the 50th day of the government. Government of good governance. Good governance. 50th day in the, uh, in, uh, in the course of their implementation of the 10 day, 10 year, uh, 100, 100, year program, day program. 100 day program. On the 50th day, they resorted to do this scandal. And this, our parliament has not yet discussed. Three and a half years have gone. They talk everything on earth except in the scandal, scam. So that is what, what is scandal. But one might say that uh, Arjuna Lotius is behind bars now. There, there is a court case ongoing regarding the central bank bond scam. Perpetual Treasuries has been suspended from dealing at the CSE. Right. Are these uh, adequate I mean, steps? I mean, let the general and Supreme Court handle all these things. But there is a duty cast upon the legislature to debate it. See what has happened, uh, correct mistakes, make corrections, you know, this all happened after the central bank was taken over by the prime minister of the country. All this the central bank was under the finance minister, I mean from 1947 onwards. But now you're speaking about an opportunity for uh, the legislature of this country to debate the biggest scam that happened in the country yeah. and you on your part point your finger at the prime minister as the main person uh, behind he is, this. No, he, is in, he is in charge of central bank. He the was in charge at the time, yes. At the uh, time, he was in charge. But one might say that the government or the, the parliament, moreover, did have a chance to voice their opinion regarding this, strongly against this, during the no-confidence motion against Prime Minister Ranadhi. No motion, right. this, this aspect was never brought to, brought to light. They didn't use that opportunity. They didn't use the opportunity? No, no. You go through the answer and see. No one touch upon that scandal. And when Prime Minister was fully responsible as Minister in charge of Central Bank. So, but why, why didn't the legislature touch know. upon this? I don't know. What about the joint opposition? What about the opposition? Opposition, of this joint opposition, government, or bank benches, all are in the same boat. <laughs> Which brings us on to our next question, uh, Mr. Dugunasekara. <laughs> the country is currently, well, at least purported to be run by the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and the United National Party. It's quite evident that there are many internal conflicts between the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and the United National Party. Who is actually running the country? These are first experiment in our country. There's two major parties in a government, which had never happened earlier. So people uh, had a lot of high hopes, high hopes expectations. Hmm. And this has now run into crisis. Main reason why I can see, knowing very well the inner workings, 
the conflict conflict of policies is one thing right absence of a strategy is another thing and absence of when you say conflict of policies can you pinpoint a few now for instance now the sri lanka freedom party has its own so, its social democratic policy hmm. plat- platform and unp as a conservative neoliberal liberal approach to problem so on the economic issues you can't take a correct uh, policy line you can't take a firm stance firm line there is a reason there is a reason and among the other issues between the two parties are they issues of the then uh, are they then the, the prime minister the president has no majority in the either in the cabinet or in the parliament, parliament. so they have virtually after the 90th amendment the main man who in the, the political scene in the government as far as the government is concerned is the prime minister because the 90th amendment vested him more powers and um, through the parliament the parliament in turn of course, he commands it because he has a majority and then right. through the 20th amendment the proposed 20th amendment the jvp suggests that parliament elect the president or i beg your pardon parliament elect the prime minister who would have all executive powers do you feel that this is a step no, in the no, right direction the, for the that country that uh, you can't take that in isolation if if, you, I, if first we must decide if they are going to have the executive presidency or, or not. not if you are not going to have the executive presidency then of course naturally the power full power goes to the parliament to the prime minister I, prime prime minister is the head of the parliament but anyway there's a there's a different one single individual doesn't come and have the power prime minister is he has to depend on his parliamentary group parliamentary group always throw him out but president can be thrown thrown out but the people have elected so he goes on for 5 years but the right? president is directly the elected by the people that is the one chance that the general public in this country have the opportunity I to, re- to elect their leader that experiment has complete fail from jaya jawadana to maitri basir sir but given the consecutive parliaments that have come into play people have lost trust in every single parliament that has been in the past and yeah, lost faith in parliament lost faith. so do you believe that it is it is uh, is viable that we uh, allow parliament to no, decide that is not the that people have lost in the people Oh, people are lost in the faith, the faith of in the, the people pre- in president parliament. prime minister mps all i mean that, that's the general that's part of the crisis the economic crisis being reflected in the society in the culture the people I mean, in the country that is it it's talking a, about the it's only a reflection talking about the economic crisis being reflected in the country yesterday and in the past few days Uh, we reported on a massive number of murders involving underworld gangs that is i said reflected with the culture so this is a clear reflection of the economic economic is reflected in reflected in the society is social crisis then also then it is reflected with the culture it has become a cultural crisis down the line there's no discipline has completely come calm down all these are arising from the socio economic factors i mean that's the basic thing you must understand is a socio economic factors that generate all these crises subsidiary crises so you have to i mean address it the basics you can't by putting them in a given capital punishment you can't solve the economic crisis so it is a socio economic factor which generate this all these crises subsidiary crises that's it so is the government taking adequate steps to address nothing, the nothing, root cause nothing nothing they first they must comprehend the problem no they can't even comprehend they the have not yet comprehended the the gravity of the problem they have not comprehended do you believe that it is because the government is detached from the problems of the general public when you speak about economic problems i mean the the, the general the average sri lankan is facing a, a massive problem when it comes to living on a day to day basis i mean they, they need, all know they are know but they don't know what cause they don't feel they know they know <laughs> there is a difference between knowing feel, and feeling people feel people don't know what the cause is people put the blame on the mps and all that they no be because here in our country because complete the political culture has completely collapsed you know when did the political culture in the that, country yeah, start I mean, to that, collapse yeah, I mean, it's, it's could a, it be it's traced a, back it's, it's, it's a long time as we we'll have to it's been a long time coming from this this original sin is the neoliberalist economic project 
So it just happens to yeah, be that. that this government of good governance that promised us uh, so many beautiful things has just escalated the problem from oh, one this to another. part of the world crisis. Okay. You know, I mean, this is a neoliberal economic crisis has run into crisis globally. That is what is happening in America. That is why he is uh, indicated in a red war, economic sanctions and all the rest of it. That is, that is the reason. So we are a small economy. In our own way, we are uh, undergoing this uh, sufferings. So what do you believe that parliament should do to address these issues? Parliament can't do it. The political parties should address well, speaking about the political parties is govern, govern the parliament practice. Speaking about political parties, uh, now, when we tried this whole experiment of uh, a national government. I don't think that either UNP or the Sri Lankan Freedom Party have ever discussed this at their central committee. I mean, this economic crisis. First, let them decide. Give, give, the, give an opportunity to the rank and file of the central committees to parties to deliberate on this economic crisis, to find out the origin of crisis. No, they will not allow them to discuss. So again, coming back to the whole political culture in Sri Lanka, first we tried this experiment with the national government, bringing in the United National Party and the Sri Lanka Freedom Party together. Didn't work out. The Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna was formed quite recently, a very young party. They came into the local government elections and won a landslide victory. But even after their victory, they promised that uh, they, will, they will work for the people through the local governments, give them power. That's what they said. But have they worked enough? Now we've got all three parties, all three main parties in the country, uh, running different arms of the government. Uh, but there seems to be no development. No, no, no development. I mean, but what I think, we will have to rethink the whole thing. We must go in for an alternate political program, economic program. You mean alternate political party? No, political party. Even the existing parties, they have to think of, think of fresh. Otherwise, of course, we will, the crisis will prolong, be prolonged. But it doesn't because seem like the political parties or the politicians in the country want to think afresh. They keep on going back to the same old leaders who have been accused of corruption, who right. have run this country I for mean, a I mean, number of years and failed to why, establish why, a proper why do you blame development. Only, why do you blame only the politicians? What about our economics? What are they doing? They, they are keeping quiet now. You take... <laughs> so, but all financial <laughs> financial activities of the country finally rest they are to, within I mean, they are, the responsibility. I mean, Everybody is answerable to know, parliament. Except a one or two few. In our country, we have only very few political economists. We have academic economists, are there, no doubt. They will look at. But we want some political economists. They are the people who really see, see through the whole thing. I mean, there is no debate. There is no discussion going on in the country. Such an acute economic crisis, see, it's now been discussed. In your opinion, Mr. Diogunasekar, now the government also has the judiciary within the separation of powers. What is, uh, what do you believe uh, compromised neoliberalism? What, separation of powers? I, I, what, what do you believe compromised neoliberalism in this country? Neoliberalism? Yes. There is no compromise. <laughs> so we'll have, I mean, rethink the whole thing. The whole world is rethinking, excepting our country. Neoliberalism means the simple, I know, I mean, put in two or three words. You are given full liberty for the capital to operate on its own, out, out of government or any other control. That's it. It's behaving as its own. That is the neoliberalism. Nothing more. Other things are all a subsidiary, the main thing. That is that they have to, Today, you find the central government, central banks are unable to control public finance in the world. They are all in the in the form of speculative capital or hedge hedge funds. Various funds are operating outside central bank, outside treasuries. I mean, this, this is the this is the feature of the neoliberalism. So this is single handed we can't fight. I mean, we are a very small economy, economy as far as world economy is concerned. So, but we must see the realities, understand. Comprehend the realities, take precautionary measures. But instead, we also get into the same boat. That is what has happened. The boat that is way. sinking. Sinking. Uh, Mr. Dugunasekar, you, you asked what are the economists in the country doing? What are the professionals in the country doing? I don't, I don't see anything. Very, 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 one of only few people. I, 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 can, I can name some of the people who are contributing. Okay, let's, 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 talk no, about one, let's talk about one specific issue. The Sri Lanka-Singapore Free Trade Agreement. 
it was signed through the back door. How are economists, how are professionals supposed oh, to voice their opinion? No, no, trade rates on this being discussed widely. I'm speaking the crisis, economic crisis. Free trade is in one aspect of the whole thing. I'm just, I'm just talking about uh, 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 an isolated incident. The Sri Lanka, the Sri Lanka Singapore free trade agreement. That's this right. was not bought into public discourse. I mean, nobody no. saw the agreement before it was signed. How ah, can that is true. That, that, that is true. That, but at least, that, at least now it's been discussed. After it was being signed. That's right. Because the parliament. But what's only, the point? I mean, no, no, recently the ministers have the power to sign an agreement, and without no, no, notifying the cabinet, to, uh, should they should have been brought into the cabinet. Okay. I understand that even some the, people say it was brought to cabinet. Some, no, some say, say yeah, that I don't know. They, but they it, has, the it has never come to the parliament. The General. Yeah. No one knows. Nobody knows. That is why it's been I mean, so 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 many so much of a speculation. So my question to you is: You point the finger at the economists and the professionals in the country. How are they supposed to voice? No, no, their I, I was referring to that not only with restricting to the free free trade, uh, free trade the, the whole general thing. economic crisis, okay. the social crisis, the cultural crisis. There are people are there. I know, I can name, I name, I don't know name, uh, with due respect to the others, hmm. but there are, but not sufficient. They, they are, their voices, I mean, they are the experts, they are the, they are the knowledgeable people, they, the, no, they are the people who should guide the parliamentarians, the politicians. But one can say that even if they do uh, offer their opinion or their That, that is, their, their that is if no, if. first they must do it, no. Okay. Then only you can see that the others, whether or not, they, they must do their part of the job, no. Which had been there earlier, in 1950s, 60s, Pera Dhani had donned the economic commune. They are the people who are contributing to the, they all, all the parliamentarians, ministers used to consult them. Today, no. Do you believe there's a lack of consultation? It seems as if Sri Lankan, no kind of the Sri Lankan economy is run by a few people, a few people of a very elite club, if you might it's say. It's a club, it's a, it's a finance capital club. I the, don't know the name. And the two major parties are victims of those finance capital. Two major parties are victims of those finance capital. They are the people who are running. They are the people who own the wealth of the country. We have owned landed proprietors in the country in 1948 when Sri Lanka gained independence. It's a landed gentry. The biggest landed. Today there are no such. We have no industrial capitalist class. We only have traders. Then we have the finance capital. Finance capital. And no one knows, no one concentrated on that aspect. They are the people behind, behind the whole thing. And it, it was brought to light through the central bank scam. When I say, you can have. Hmm. It is those from those people that the government buys, borrows money. For all that. What, is, what is the domestic finance capital market? Finance market. It is the finance capital owners. The inter internationally are the same. International same. Mr. Dugan Saker, we're running out of time. I give you this final opportunity. If you could speak to the general public, which you are doing now, you can speak to the general public of this country. What do you believe that they should do to turn this economic crisis no, in the country I mean, around? We'll have to take some immediate steps, are there? short term, immediate, immediate Is that one short term, medium, and long term. I start from long term. Must have planning. Re-establish the planning ministry, and central bank should be give a full autonomy for them to. It was after 2004 or oh, some under under neoliberalism. I think it was uh, uh, central bank was also politicized, hmm. gradually politicized. And that again was, they was must be left depicted alone. in the central bank. I mean, they are scan. capable people, intellectuals. They know. They know the. I mean, you must try to get the advice. And they, you know, here the politicians, I mean, for the first time in the history, immediately after the new government came, the ministers met in the central bank canteen you know, for their discussion. Earlier, the ministers, no one used to dare to step into the central bank premises. Ministers don't, even the finance minister didn't go. It was, I mean, it's exclusively autonomous body. It should appear to be autonomous, appear to be independent appear to be non-politicized. That is it. I mean, we have very, very good, good people, expert, expert, knowledgeable people there. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Diu Gunasekara. So as we started off the show uh, before, still,
corruption is rampant in the country and it is inevitable that we are facing an economic crisis and that this situation is going to get worse. Thank you very much, Mr. Diogo for joining Thanks. us and expressing your views regarding that matter. Thank you very much to Thank our you all. viewers for watching us. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, uh, you've been watching Newsline. Thank you very much for watching once again. Take care and God bless.